Hi everyone. I think the, it's connected. Huh? Hi everyone. Yeah. So we can start now. <clears throat> So this is a very uh, small, brief, concise class on the topic of fluids. Yes, fluid is a very important topic, very, 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 very important topic. And I'm just going to just going to discuss this important topic with you. Yes. Okay. So when we talk about the concept of fluid. There are three why I have selected fluid because this is the last moment revision topic. So we all should be confident in this topic fluids. Whenever we talk about the fluids, the first thing that we should be knowing is the choice of fluid, the choice of fluid. The second thing that we should be knowing is the volume requirement of the fluid. And third thing that we should be knowing is the concept of uh, the rate rate for fluids so choice volume requirement and rate they are the three very 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 important things that we have to let us start that we have to know let us start with the calculation of volume requirement let us start with calculation of volume requirement of fluids volume requirement of fluids now this is very important now you can have the volume requirement now you can have the volume requirement in ml per day or ml per hour you can have the volume requirement in ml per day and ml per hour so how we calculate it in ml per day and how we calculate it in ml per hour let us see the easy and the easiest formula for this is we have taken the weight so first 10 kgs so first 10 kgs second 10 kgs and then further kgs then further kgs so this is how you have to see so if you are calculating if you are calculating the fluid in ml per day we calculate it like 100 ml 100 ml per kg for first 10 kgs 50 ml per kg for second 10 kgs and 20 ml per kg for further kgs so it's like 150 20 150 20 next is if you want to calculate the fluids in ml per hour the formula is it is 4 ml per kg for first 10 kgs it is 2 ml per kg for next 10 kgs and it is 1 ml per kg for further kgs yes so like if you have like if you have just yeah like if you have to calculate for an example for an example if you have to calculate it for a 60 kg person for a 60 kg person how you will calculate it answer will be 100 ml per kg for first 10 kgs plus 50 ml per kg for next 10 kgs plus plus 20 ml per kg for remaining kgs so how many kgs are remaining 40 kgs are remaining 20 you have to subtract now so it will be this will be 1500 this will be 1500 and this will be 800 so this sums to what 2300 ml per day this is 2300 ml per day same if you calculate in ml per hour same if you calculate in ml per hour it will be 4 ml per kg for first 10 kg 2 ml per kg for next 10 kg and 1 ml per kg for remaining kgs so how much this is this is 60 this is 60 and this is again 40 so 100 ml per hour students if you multiply this 100 ml per hour into 24 you will get volume of volume requirement in ml per day so here if you see 
if you multiply this 100 by 24 you will get 2400 and here you are getting a volume of what here you are getting a volume of 2300 so why this difference of 100 ml do you know nothing will go if you give or infuse 100 or 200 ml extra fluid in the patient's body but if you forget the formula the things will be problematic ideally this should have been 3.78 something ideally this should have been 3.78 something in order to make the formula easy and memorizable we have rounded it off to 4 so remember when you are in trauma bay you are there is such a chaos that you are not able to recall your own name and phone number how can you recall a complex formula that is why presuming that this is the chaos condition chaos like condition we cannot take anything complicated inside our brain surgeons themselves are what morons majority of them are morons including me so we want some easy things 150 20 4 to 1 150 20 4 to 1 so that we can memorize it easily is that clear no so this is how you calculate m volume in ml per day or ml per hour the next task is when you order sister sister please start with 2600 ml per day or sister start with 150 ml per hour she stares at you why she stares because she says she wanted to say doctor had i been so intelligent i would have been your batchmate so just tell me how many drops per minute i will titrate it yes or no so the next the next task is calculation of flow rate yes calculation of flow rate so flow rate calculation and this is in what drops per minute this is in drops per minute i will write it as dpm drops per minute yes how to calculate this flow rate in drops per minute how to calculate this flow rate in drops per minute so dpm is defined as dpm is defined as there are two tricks this is equal to number of hundreds number of hundreds yes in volume in ml per day number of hundreds in volume in ml per day and the second formula is it is defined as volume in ml per hour divided by 4 volume in ml per hour divided by 4 volume in ml per hour divided by 4 so try to see this this is again very interesting thing yes try to see this suppose if you see 2600 ml per day if you say 2600 ml per day so students how many drops per minute how many drops per minute this will be how many drops 26 drops per minute 26 drops per minute is that clear next is next is if you say 3200 ml per day how many drops per minute 32 drops per minute can you see there are 32 and 200 this is how this is easy it's easy remember in surgery we don't have anything complex whatever we understand we keep it otherwise we do a resection this is how so we keep the formulas also very easy so without pen and paper we can just calculate it yes next is next is but a ringer lactate is what we give we don't give ns remember ns is not given a look ns i'll come to that point just wait so when we talk about volume in ml per hour imagine you say 100 ml per hour so how many drops per minute 100 divided by 4 is equal to 25 drops per minute suppose you said 180 ml per hour that means how much 180 divided by 4 is equal to what 45 drops per minute is it clear or no so how to calculate the volume how to calculate the rate is that clear so now we move to the next important part is choice of fluid choice of fluid so let us see what are the choices available any problem with this part students if you have you can ask me these are very important last minute topics they are very important so next is the types of fluid good morning <laughs> this good morning so let us talk about the types of fluid if we talk about the types of fluid we have three basic types of fluid one is crystalloid which is the most frequently used crystalloid then we have colloid then we have colloid so crystalloid colloid and then the last is blood and blood products 
blood and blood products very very it's very important fluids are very important yes <clears throat> crystalloids if you talk about what are the crystalloids that we have we have three category of crystalloids what are the three category of we have isotonic category isotonic crystalloids what are the isotonic crystalloids we have we have ringer lactate we have ringer lactate yes or no this is also known as hartman solution this is also known as hartman solution yes the second is so ringer lactate the second is normal saline normal saline ns yes this is one normal 0.9 nacl 0.9 nacl next is we can have plasma light we can have plasma light so there are the three isotonic solutions there are three isotonic solution they are the basic fluids for resuscitation they are the basic fluids for resuscitation remember they are the basic fluids basic fluids yes for resuscitation for resuscitation remember the ideal for hypovolemic shock is the ideal fluid for hypovolemic shock is normal saline normal saline normal saline is ideal for hypovolemic shock ideal for hypovolemic shock i will discuss all these things don't worry the next thing that we have is we have hypotonic solutions also so we have hypotonic solutions also if you talk about hypotonic solutions what are the hypotonic options that we have we have 5% dextrose 5% dextrose yes or no it's a hypotonic solution then we have hypertonic also what are the hypertonic solutions that we have the hypertonic solutions that we have the number one is three normal nacl three normal nacl which is also known as hypertonic saline hypertonic saline do you know hypertonic saline is preferred over normal saline in damage control resuscitation so in in hypovolemic shock in hypovolemic shock yes hypovolemic so decompensated hypovolemic shock you can say in decompensated hypovolemic shock yes this is preferred over this is preferred over the conventional one normal nacl is that clear or no why i will tell you after 5 minutes the second is we have we have darrow solution we have darrow solution do you know this is this is a hyperkalemic base or you can say this is the solution with maximum k plus concentration so maximum k plus concentration this is ideal for hypokalemia this is ideal for hypokalemia ideal for hypokalemia next is next is so we have darrow solution we have nacl what else we have what else we have we have dns 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 this is again so this is used for basic basic resuscitation we use generally for kids we prefer dns always we prefer dns because the combination of, of uh, dextrose and normal saline one very important point about this okay about this uh, uh, crystalloid is crystalloid crystalloids crystalloids are fluid of choice crystalloids crystalloids are fluid of choice for resuscitation resuscitation the second fluid that we have the second fluid that we have is a colloid the second important point that you have to remember is colloids are colloids are contraindicated contraindicated in first first 12 to 24 hours of hypovolemic shock of shock first 12 to 24 arts of hypovolemic shock or shock i'll tell you about them don't worry as far as blood is concerned colloids i'll take separately as far as blood is concerned blood and blood product blood and blood product i will just tell you there are what are the options that we have and what is the most important thing that you have to remember the options is we have packed rbcs we can use whole blood we can use whole blood suppose if you want to give one or two units of blood you can give whole blood yes very good so you can give whole blood but not in massive quantity i'll tell you yes boy you are right boy good you are right that yes colloids leaks into the interstitium i'll tell then we have ffp we have freshly frozen plasma 
we have platelets platelets yes or no we have cryo precipitates we have cryo precipitates they are all very 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 important very important one thing that you have to remember in blood is that what is memtp what is mtp mtp stands for massive transfusion protocol massive transfusion protocol remember when do you use massive transfusion protocol the answer is the indication is when you require a huge volume of what blood to be replaced so indication indication is when more than equal to 10 units more than equal to 10 units blood transfusion required blood transfusion required in general in general or 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 more than equal to six units more than equal to six units during or post surgery so during or post surgery if you require more than six units of blood also then also then also you will go for mtp protocol and what is the standard protocol the standard protocol says instead of giving the serum loaded with plasma go for one is to one is to one ratio of FFP is to PRBC is to platelets is to platelets is that clear or no yes FFP is to PRBC is to platelets this is what is 1 is to 1 is to 1 ratio 1 is to 1 is to 1 ratio let us quickly talk about the colloids and then I will discuss in 2-3 minutes something about the damage control resuscitation also which is again very important do you know colloids what is the beauty of colloids they are synthetic protein molecules they are synthetic protein molecules and what is the use of these synthetic protein molecules their aim is to increase their aim is to increase the plasma oncotic pressure plasma oncotic pressure and thus 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 therefore they cause they cause what volume expansion therefore they cause volume expansion very good Mukesh very good so let us see if you have a patient of hypotension if you have a patient of hypotension and this is how the scenario is this is how the scenario is this is the intravascular space this is the very good boy the, that means you have taken the class huh? you have taken my class huh? EVS EVS yes extravascular space so we have intravascular space you have extravascular space because this is the term which i actually use so really they act like a magical molecules the moment you give colloids the moment you give colloid what will happen the oncotic pressure the oncotic pressure of intravascular space will be increased you know you know the law of diffusion or osmosis the water will flow from low osmolar state to high osmolar state so water will move into the intravascular compartment and therefore therefore yes what happens the volume is expanded and the expanded and the hypotension is corrected so water moves into intravascular space and therefore the hypotension will be absolutely corrected now try to understand why the concept of colloids contraindicates in shocks so colloids versus shock when you talk about colloid versus shock this is very important to understand that shock is equal to endothelial injury endothelial injury so acute phase of shock there is endothelial injury endothelial injury now try to understand endothelial injury is equal to leaky gap junctions leaky gap junctions try to understand yes we will use it for ascites i will tell mukesh everything try to understand colloids are associated with a problem in case of the acute phase of shock so acute phase of shock the problem is that the that the gap junctions are open and therefore therefore the so called molecules that you give the so called molecules that you give they might escape into the what space extra vascular space the problem is not escaping into the extravascular space the problem is they are synthetic molecules they are synthetic molecules and they don't interact with the cells they don't interact with the cells so the intravascular volume is not 
in, sorry the intracellular volume is not replenished they will only add to the oncotic pressure so there is increase in oncotic pressure there is increase in oncotic pressure of extravascular space and the reverse of what you were planning actually happens the water is further siphoned from the intravascular space to extravascular space and the patient might collapse so therefore remember the endothelium requires therefore endothelium requires 12 to 24 hours 12 to 24 hours to heal and therefore it is contraindicated in first 12 to 24 hours do you know like mukesh was asking mukesh was asking sir can we give an ascites after 12 to 24 hours all the endotheliums would have healed and that is the reason that colloids actually are the game changers in a patient of shock after 12 to 24 hours you give albumin you will see a beautiful response if the patient is having ascites you give albumin you will see a beautiful response you want to do ascitic tap if you want to do ascitic tap you have to do this so these are some very 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 important points now try to understand instead now you are desperate ki bhai, the patient of shock the patient of shock has has hypotension the patient of shock has hypotension now how to manage them yes how to manage them how to correct this acute hypotension in shock acute hypotension in shock instead of this instead of this prefer prefer hypertonic saline hypertonic saline what is the utility of hypertonic saline what is the utility of hypertonic saline can anyone tell me the utility of hypertonic saline so can you tell me now let me tell you this is a patient of shock this is a patient of shock yes this is a patient of shock same patient everything is same now you have given hypertonic saline you have given hypertonic saline now these are the hypertonic saline molecules now you must be thinking sir won't they escape out but they will also escape out yes or no so this is a this is a patient of shock and shock means there is hypoperfusion there is a demand of demand of fluid so this is the intravascular space this is the extravascular space and there is one more compartment which is known as intracellular space intracellular space do you know colloids are synthetic molecules they are not the product of the body so what happens extra fluid extra fluid or extra normal saline which moves out into the extravascular space will be quickly absorbed by the intracellular space do you know and thus it is doing dual action what is the action first of all by going inside the cell it is replenishing it is replenishing the intracellular defect intracellular defect yes or no deficit or you can say deficit and second is the remaining the remaining crystalloid the remaining hypertonic crystalloid is going to increase the plasma osmolarity also plasma osmolarity also is that clear or no and hence it is going to attract the extravascular space fluid not the intracellular space and hence it is going to give you that same effect same effect at lesser dose lesser dose so if three bottles of normal saline one bottle of hypertonic saline will do that work is that clear or no is this clear why we prefer hypertonic saline nowadays in crystalloids in crystalloids this is what is the beauty what are the famous crystalloids that we have what are the famous crystalloids that we have let us see the types of crystalloids the types of crystalloid we have human albumin human albumin but this is not the human albumin yes it is a recombinant type of human albumin recombinant type of human albumin students this is the best colloid available best colloid it is available in two forms it is available in 5% and 20% do you know both of them will increase the oncotic pressure oncotic pressure by what mmhg oncotic pressure what mmhg 20 mmhg for 5% 70 mmhg they both will cause volume expansion volume expansion 
this will cause one time and this will cause five time this is very important about recombinant human albumin the, the only drawback is what is the only drawback can anyone tell me what is the only drawback yes it's the cost one bottle of albumin cost you around 70 uh, 5700 to 7500 this is the range yes or no this is the range if you buy of Baxter it is going to be 6800 around if you buy of Reliance it will be somewhere around 62 1600 hospital is even getting at 5000 so there is not big margin also in there next is next is next is Intas is the cheapest player giving at 5700 and hospital rate is 46 4700 somewhere around so let us talk about this recombinant human albumin the next is dextran dextran yes or no dextran yes dextran is a deadly fluid which is a combination which is a combination of two bacteria incubated in a sucrose media what are the two fluids what are the what are the two bacteria we have leuconostoc 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 mesenteroids leuconostoc mesenteroids and along with this yes we have streptococcus mutants streptococcus mutants so we have streptococcus mutants and we have leuconostoc mesenteroids and they are incubated in what sucrose media they are incubated in sucrose media and hence you get all those desired desired what yes features of this what are the features let us see the classical features that we have students the first thing is it will cause volume expansion only one time the second important point about this is it is associated with yes known to cause hyperglycemia the third important point is that it interferes with it interferes with blood group blood group cross matching blood group cross matching blood group cross matching then it also prolongs bleeding time it also prolongs bleeding time so these are all important points important points and do you know they have so much of bacterial components lipopolysaccharides that they are going to cause anaphylaxis also anaphylaxis but see, where do we use dextran yes where do we use dextran where do we use actually where do we use since it is going to prolong the bleeding time we utilize this for microvascular anastomosis so whenever you do microvascular anastomosis especially the coronary bypasses yes microvascular anastomosis anastomosis we don't want these coronary veins to get blocked and hence you perfuse them with what dextran so that the microvascular thrombosis will not occur is that clear or no so there we use dextran it's available in 30,000 kilo dalton form and 70,000 kilo dalton form also then the third one that we have you can use hemexil this is the commonest the commonest variety that we use hemexil hemexil this is the degraded gelatin polymer this is degraded gelatin polymer this is degraded gelatin polymer if we talk about degraded gelatin polymer how we use hemexil how we use hemexil let us see this thing hemexil is a degraded gelatin polymer volume expansion is equal to one time the t half is equal to two hours only two hours so it's a very comfortable colloid without having any side effect on what uh, homeostasis or hemostasis next is heta starch this is the last steroid that uh, last colloid that we have heta starch this is ethoxylated polymer of amylopectin ethoxylated heta starch and hemexyl they are the commonest available colloids in hospital so ethox they are cost effective also so ethoxylated amylopectin polymer amylopectin polymer amylopectin polymer both these features are same both the features are same let us quickly revise the concept of damage control resuscitation dcs dcr damage control resuscitation the first principle of damage control resuscitation is first principle limited use of limited use of crystalloid you are not allowed to use crystalloid at the rate 5 liters or 6 liters but you already patient is having hypovolemia suppose 3 liters of blood is there and you add 6 liters of crystalloid you have converted this blood into lassi yes or no or a smoothie or a yes or a mojito so limited use of crystalloid yes up to 2 liters up to 2 liters only in this 500 to 1 500 to 1000 ml 
can be bolus can be bolus you can give it as bolus the second is replace it by blood use blood and blood products use blood and blood products now someone is saying sir bp is not maintaining who has asked you to strictly run for bp maintain a threshold bp allow hypotension more you more you run for bp more will be the bleeding is that clear so permissive hypotension permissive permissive hypotension permissive hypotension if you talk about permissive hypotension what is this let's say the target map the target map is kept around 65 to 70 mmhg 70 mmhg the fourth is the fourth is use trial of trial of hypertonic saline and fifth is yes use cryo precipitates use cryo precipitates cryo precipitates or 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 nowadays you have recombinant recombinant factor 7 recombinant factor 7 a trial has been published where recombinant factor 7 actually causes the better recovery better recovery of these patients so this was a miniature small session on fluids so we will be connecting with lot many new sessions and tomorrow i'm planning tomorrow i'm planning to take a flashcard based revision session flashcard based revision so till then i hope you enjoy it and till then stay safe keep on revising i'm not going to waste lot of time of yours this time is the most precious time till then bye bye i hope you people enjoyed the session